Okay, we're going to continue with the female reproductive system in part three of this video series and conclude with the female orgasm and answer the what questions. What nerves participate in stimulation and orgasm and what differences are there between the male and female orgasm? Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Morton and I'm the noted anatomist. Okay, so the female sexual response has two parts. Stimulation, which the pudendal nerve is the nerve that provides sensory input from the genitals to the central nervous system. And then the correlated uh, motor output is via parasympathetic innervation, which dilates blood vessels to fill the erectile tissue and also stimulates the vestibular glands. Um, and I'm not going to go into this one so much, but cognitive stimulation also produces similar outcomes to um, um, providing this parasympathetic output. Um, then the orgasm is done by two different nerves. One, the pudendal nerve that causes rhythmic contractions in the pelvic and perineal muscles and sympathetic nerves that causes rhythmic contraction of pelvic organs and also dilates the cervical canal. So let's take a look at each one of these individually. So there's an overview of this entire video. Um, First of all, the pudendal nerve provides sensory input from genitals to the central nervous system. To demonstrate this, let's take a look at this uh, perineal view We're on the uh, right side of this uh, illustration. There's surface anatomy, and you can see the, um, uh, the os coxa. And on the left side of this picture, the skin and erectile, uh, the skin part of me just has been removed, and we can see the perineal muscles. And so, here we can see the uh, clitoris, the urethra, the vaginal orifice, the anal uh, region, as well as labia majora and labia minora. And there we just ghosted in sensory nerves coming from those tissues back down into uh, what would be at the bottom right of these nerve tracings, the, um, opt, uh, the um, obturator canal. And that's showing the sensory neurons coming from these perineal organs. Um, We'll do that one more time in this cross section where that's showing the S2, 3, 4 spinal cord levels, and that's showing the ventral ramus, and uh, just in the schematic, a branch of that S2 or S3 or S4 ventral rami give contributions to the pudendal nerve. And so the genitals and the perineum has sensory neurons that come in through the ventral ramus and then course in the dorsal root and enter the S2, 3, 4 spinal cord levels, and that's how the pudendal nerve brings sensation to the central nervous system. Now, a, the motor output is through parasympathetic nerves, and the vehicle are pelvic splanchnic nerves, and then these parasympathetics dilate blood vessels to fill the erectile tissue and also stimulate the vestibular gland secretions to lubricate the uh, vagina. So let's show using this picture that shows the, and you can see in red, the abdominal aorta, and everything in yellow is showing nerves, and the sigmoid colon is there um, for orientation. So we zoom in, and we then focus right there, and we can see the S234 ventral rami. Um, and the spinal cord's not shown, so all we see is the S234 ventral rami ghosted there. And then they give rise from the ventral ramus to these pelvic splanchnic nerves. And so here, these pelvic splanchnic nerves are transporting preganglionic parasympathetic neurons en route to uh, this erectile tissue. And so down here, those pelvic splanchnics then send their parasympathetics through this inferior hypogastric plexus, which is an extension of the prevertebral plexus, which then goes into the erectile tissues. So let's do that one more time with this schematic where we see S234 spinal cord levels. And then there coming off the ventral ramus is a pelvic splanchnic nerve. And so we have a cell body for a preganglionic parasympathetic neuron that's in the lateral horn of that sacral part of the cord. And then the axon exits the ventral root, ventral ramus, and goes into that pelvic splanchnic nerve and into this inferior hypogastric plexus. And then synapses with a postganglionic parasympathetic neuron within the wall of the organ, right within the tissue itself which then secretes um, uh, either um, acetylcholine or 
uh, uh, nitric oxide as the neurotransmitter that results in those blood vessels dilating and causing the erectile tissues to engorge with blood and become erect. So I put here targeting the erectile tissue specifically, it is the blood vessels within the erectile tissues. And that includes blood vessels within the glands clitoris, the corpora cavernosa, the crust, the bulb of the vestibule. And then additionally, it's going to also uh, stimulate the greater vestibular gland. Um, and stimulation, cognitive stimulation produces similar outcomes. And so there's the um, higher order brain levels that can also cause many of these parasympathetic responses. Um, and then when sexual stimulation, whether it's local stimulation and or cognitive signals from the cerebrum reaches a maximum intensity, then a reflex is initiated resulting in the female climax called the orgasm. Now the orgasm is initiated by two different nerves. One is the pudendal nerve, which causes rhythmic contraction of pelvic and perineal muscles. So what does that look like? Well, here we have this pelvic hemisection, and there is a few structures to help give some orientation. And there is the S1 uh, ventral ramus, and then S2, S3, and S4. And the pudendal nerve arises from the ventral rami of S2, 3, and 4 like this. There is one branch from the ventral ramus from S2, one from S3, and there is from S4. And they come together, these branches, to form the pudendal nerve, which courses over the uh, ischial spine and then enters the obturator canal on route to all these pelvic and perineal muscles. So there's our pudendal nerve. And so let's do that again. Now, except in this case, we can see where the pudendal nerve is exiting uh, the obturator canal and going to the muscles of the perineum, which includes the following. It's going to go to the ischiocavernosus, bulbospongiosis, superficial transverse perineal, levator ani, and extranal sphincter. All these muscle, muscles are going to then uh, contract rhythmically during an orgasm. Now let's do that one more time now in this showing this schematic where this is the S2, 3, 4 spinal cord levels. Recall that the pudendal nerve arises from these levels of the spinal cord and then uh, S2, 3, 4. And then there's the pudendal nerve, which is in this schematic, a branch off that ventral ramus. And so in the ventral horn, gray matter is where the uh, lower motor neuron cell body arises and its axon courses out the ventral root through the ventral ramus in the pudendal nerve and then causes rhythmic contractions of the pelvic muscles and perineal muscles, which include those muscles we've mentioned before. Okay, we're now going to talk about the sympathetic nerves, the sympathetic component of the female orgasm and how sympathetic discharge causes rhythmic contraction of the pelvic organs and also causes dilation of the cervical canal. So let's now uh, cover the sympathetics looking at this illustration where we then focus on there these uh, L1 and L2 ventral rami. And recalling that all sympathetic um, nerves arise from between the T1 and L2 spinal cord levels. And because we're dealing in the pelvic and perineal region of the body, we're going to go to the caudal end of that portion of the spinal cord. Now the spinal cord is not shown in this picture. All we see are the ventral rami in this case, L1 and L2 ventral rami that are uh, coming from the L1, L2 spinal cord level. And so symp preganglionic sympathetic neurons are traveling in the L1, L2 ventral ramus. They then course in through the white rami communicons through the lumbar sympathetic ganglia. And I say that again through because they do not synapse here. They course in the, these preganglionic sympathetic neurons continue into the lumbar splanchnic nerves and they enter the prevertebral plexus. So they descend through the inferior mesenteric uh, plexus and down to the superior hypogastric plexus and then down through the hypogastric nerves. And it's somewhere in this region that many of these sympathetic neurons are going to synapse. And then the postganglionic sympathetic neurons continue down into the inferior hypogastric plexus and then synapse in the pelvic organs. There is another way that sympathetics can get to these uh, pelvic organs, and that is through the chain. So there's our ventral rami, preganglionic sympathetic neurons course within the L1, L2 ventral ramus through the white rami communicons into the lumbar sympathetic chain 
those ganglia, and then down, they descend down to the sacral sympathetic ganglia. And then in one of these areas, and I just chose S3, but it could have been S1, S2, S3, or S4, the, there's no synapse occur, but that preganglionic sympathetic axon courses into this, through the sacral splanchnic nerve, into this infrahypogastric plexus and somewhere in this area synapse occurs and a postganglionic sympathetic neuron then courses out in synapses with uh, a pelvic organ like the uterus or uterine tube. Let's do this one more time now using this schematic where we can see the T10 and L2 spinal cord levels and there's a lumbar splanchnic and a sacral splanchnic nerve indicated. So two neurons. The first neuron arises Oh, and then, sorry, there is down there, there's the pelvic organs we're going to go to. So the first neuron is a, the preganglionic sympathetic neuron, arises in, let's say, the L1 spinal cord level, and the, the cell body rises in the lateral horn, and then the axon courses out the ventral root, ventral ramus through the white ramus, and does not synapse in that lumbar sympathetic ganglion, but exits through that lumbar splanchnic nerve, and then synapses here in the uh, hypogastric nerve and plexus region. And the postganglionic sympathetic nerve continues out to synapse with these pelvic organs and those axons course in the inferior hypogastric plexus. And then the synapse occurs with the pelvic organs and the neurotransmitter used at this synapse is norepinephrine and that norepinephrine binds to... Um, an adrenergic receptor resulting in contraction of these rhythmic contraction of the smooth muscles. But there's the other way of sympathetics getting down, and that is where the preganglionic sympathetic cell body arises in the lateral horn, and then the axon exits through the ventral root, ventral ramus, white ramus, descends the sympathetic chain, and then exits through the sacral splanchnic nerves, and then synapses with a postganglionic sympathetic neuron. And that synapse uses actually acetylcholine binding to a nicotinic receptor. And then that postganglionic sympathetic neuron continues through the inferior hypogastric plexus, and then synapses in these pelvic organs using, again, norepinephrine and an adrenergic receptor. So here we have both of those pathways laid down together. Um, and so something I will want to mention here is that this is showing two different pathways, and I only have like four neurons drawn. I, 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 it's There are thousands and thousands of these axons going, some doing the one way, some doing the other way of getting down to those structures. Uh, sympathetic uh, discharge during, a, during an orgasm also causes an increase in heart rate and blood pressure and in muscle tone. And so the following two events are unique to the female orgasm in that when a, in the female orgasm, there is no refractory period. And as a result, a female may have more than one orgasm immediately in succession. In contrast, males during the orgasm have a refractory period of many minutes to hours before another orgasm can occur. In addition, during the female orgasm, no ejaculatory event occurs. In contrast, during the male orgasm, ejaculation occurs and um, yeah, orgasm occur, uh, ejaculation occurs in the male. Now let's take a look at the female reproductive system in the orgasm in a nutshell. So here we have, uh, say, the L1 spinal cord level. And here we have, say, the S3 spinal cord level. And here are a few nerves that are helpful, pudendal, pelvic splanchnic, and sacral splanchnic as reference. And so first thing is uh, a stim stimulation of the genitals is a somatic sensation. And so here we have sensation of the female genitals, and the nerve that transmit these sensations are, is the pudendal nerve, and those sensory neurons course in the dorsal root. You can see the cell body in the dorsal root ganglion, and then courses into the sacral spinal cord level. Next is that as a result of this stimulation, a parasympathetic discharges occur, and that arises from the lateral horn of S234, and those neurons travel through pelvic splanchnics and then cause the erectile tissue, the blood vessels in the erectile tissue to become engorged with blood, and the bubble urethral gland to secrete um, the lubricant into the vestibule and vaginal canal. Um, once 
cognitive stimulation and somatic sensation stimulation reach a threshold, it causes the orgasm. And this is what has two components, the somatic motor, and this is where sensory, uh, pardon me, motor neurons arise in the ventral horn of S234, levels of the spinal cord, and course in the pudendal nerve, and then cause rhythmic contractions of the pelvic and perineal muscles. Now, I want to pause for a second. I want you to see, notice something here, is that sensation of the perineum, the sensory input that causes the erectile tissues to become uh, engorged with blood. And then when an orgasm occurs, the rhythmic contractions of pelvic and perineal muscles all come from the same spinal cord levels, S2, S3, and S4. But notice in the gray matter, the motor output is autonomics is lateral horn for parasympathetics and somatic from ventral horn. And that sensation goes into the dorsal horn but all three of those come from the same spinal cord levels. But the autonomic component um, that causes rhythmic contraction of the pelvic organs is through sympathetics, and they arise at a higher level. So sympathetics arise in the lateral horn of T10 to L2, and then those neurons descend out of the sympathetic chain and use either the lumbar or sacral splanchnics, and then they're going to cause the rhythmic contractions of the pelvic organs. And there, my friends, is the female reproductive system and the orgasm in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-hmm.